Hi folks, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Everything's unscripted. I've got guests from all over the world. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started. So my guests are here from all over. Let's see what they've got. The person with the thing in the plastic bag. I can't see through the plastic bag. <laughs> it's busted. I've got, plastic bag. I've got some figurines. I've got some necklaces. We don't want all. It's only all jewelry. Let's see. How about those figurines? Let's start with that. And those of you who are, who are doing stuff, you know, make sure you have a good connection. Make sure that you've got nice, clear heights. Dr. Lori, how are you? Hi, good. How are you, Dr. Lori? Good. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Tammy from Plymouth, Wisconsin. Hey, Tammy. So you got some bisque figurines. What do you want to know about them? Um, well, I actually seen these probably a month ago in some pictures for an estate sale. Yeah. Uh, and when I went there, they were way out of my budget. <laughs> How much way out of your budget? Um, they were asking 150 a piece. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then when I yeah. went to the... That's not only out of your budget but that's not anywhere close to where the market is. Yeah. Okay. So it's not really your budget. Isn't the problem. The problem is these people are like, Oh, I'm just going to put big numbers on something like that on the, is, are they marked? And how much did you pay for them? Um, they are marked, uh, three, one, one, six. And I okay. saw them today at the thrift store. It was <laughs> $20 for the pair. Oh, okay, good. All right. So you did fine. So a couple of different things with respect to them. First of all, those numbers indicate that they are, in fact, there's there's typically English ones and typically German ones, right? Are yours 12 inches high or yours 10 inches high? 12 inches. 12 inches high. Great. And no cracks. You didn't miss a pinky finger or the hat's missing or gloves or something. No, right? No. Okay, great. So good condition. That's terrific. Early 20th century and they're bisque. How do you tell bisque? If you look at the colors, they usually are a very muted color. They usually are not heavily glazed. Compare them to like a Yadro figurine that's heavily glazed. These are never heavily glazed. Bisque also is a lower fired ceramic than porcelain is. Lower fired in terms of temperature, right? High fired porcelain, low fired bisque. Eh, they're made in large numbers. They're usually the figurines for the middle class, if you will. Those are those come directly from England and value on the pair about 60 bucks. So you pay 20, you're gonna make, you know, 60. So three times more. It's great based on actual sales records. 100 and $150 for that pair is way too high, but they try to get some money out of it. Let me ask you this, Tammy. Uh, do you get my newsletter where you can just sign up on drlorev.com? I do. I do. Great. Absolutely. I hope it's helpful. There's lots of information in it about things like gift certificates and tips about how to sell, all different kinds of stuff. I asked so one for Christmas. So oh, Christmas there you cross. go. <laughs> you got to throw the hint, you know, you got to throw the hint. <laughs> oh, I did. They said, what do you want? This is what I want. <laughs> what do I want? Well, great. And I want you to. So a couple, one more thing before you go. My question of the day, because I like to know about all of you. My question of the day goes all the way back to elementary or grammar school. You ready? Yeah. Your favorite gym activity, was it dodgeball or when they made you climb that rope that was attached to the ceiling? Uh, ooh, I'm going to say dodgeball because I couldn't. Dodgeball. Because <laughs> why? I couldn't lift myself. I couldn't pull myself up the rope. <laughs> Neither could I. <laughs> so, you know, that lifting, I was like, who could do this? The tiniest kid in the class could do it. Everybody else is like, we can't get up the rope. Nice to see you. You too. So remember when you're looking at figurines, I want you to look at glaze versus non-glaze. It'll tell you a lot about value as well as it'll start to help you to identify what's what. What to look for is very important. And that's what I always teach you here because when you know what to look for, you'll know then you can identify what's valuable, what's not. And then I can help you give the appraisal for the market value. My guests are here from all over. Let's see what they've got. Got some more figurines. We've got something that's looking like it's on a jute necklace. We've got that piece. We've got somebody who's kind of ready, but not really ready. <laughs> but I need to see your faces. I like the I like the pearl enamel piece. I like that. That's a nice piece. I like this turquoise piece, which looks like it's probably not. Let's go with the turquoise and silver bracelet. Let's see what that is. Hey, Dr. And for Lori. those of you who are now thinking, she doesn't like my piece, I'm going to change it. That could ruin the whole thing for you. I just didn't get to you yet. So sit tight. So people are like, I'm going to switch it. Don't switch. Well, you could do what you want. Anyway, hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you doing? 
Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm great. Hi, Thanks. How are you? I'm good, sweetie. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Lori. I'm calling from uh, Belmont, North Carolina. Lori, can you back up just a little bit for sure. me? Thank you, honey. Thank you. So tell me, how do you acquire this? Do you collect Native American, Southwestern American, Southwestern I, Native American jewelry? Yeah, I have a couple turquoise pieces. Okay. I actually got this at a garage sale, gosh, probably like 33 years ago. Wow. Wow. So you've had it a long time and probably yeah. didn't pay a lot at the, at the yard sale, the garage sale, right? No, I think it was in a, in a bag filled with a whole bunch of different so, like sterling silver stuff. Here's a couple of things that make it indicative of the Navajo. First of all, the leaf form, a form that is typically in sterling silver or silver that basically has, of course, the leaf form. Very, very typical. Sometimes there's a consistent rope element also that goes around a piece of turquoise. The type of turquoise, and I like this piece of turquoise. Most, A lot of people will say, I don't like the veins in the turquoise, the darker areas of the turquoise. I like it to be all turquoise. And turquoise comes in different meth, different manners, right? So sometimes it's very, very blue, almost all blue. Sometimes it has more of the veins, depending on the mine that it came from. I happen to like this. I like the fact that it really looks like a nice, beautiful piece of, of, of course, uh, naturally developed turquoise. So I like that piece. Is the piece marked with a pictogram mark or a silver mark or an initials or something? It only has initials and it's BJ. Okay. So a couple of different things about it. So the style is that is of course the Navajo style. It looks like it's a cuff that goes around your wrist, right? Yes. Can you show us the back? Can you turn it for me? Cause your hands are, yeah. Okay. And a nice clear, of course, um, a nice clear monogram of the maker. I like that. It does look like it is sterling. Can we see the front again? Okay. And I would say it dates, of course, to about the 1980s. And how much, and you paid, do you remember what you paid all those years ago? I'm guessing, because I was younger, um, probably maybe five, 10 bucks. Yeah, we had no money when we were younger. We paid nothing for everything, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know how that is. Actually, some of us still have no money. Value on that particular piece, today's market, about $225. Oh, wow. It's a good size piece of turquoise, which is another one of the things that you look for. All my values are based on actual sales records. And many of you have, have provided those testimonials where you said, Dr. Lori told me it was worth that much. And she was right. She was yeah, right. I, have a I was question able to, about it. Because I was able to sell it for that much. What's your question, hon? In the stone itself, it almost looks like it's got silver in the stone. Yeah, typically you're going to have, of course, these other deposits, natural mineral deposits that actually get connected into the stone. That's very typical of turquoise. Sometimes okay. you'll see at the black, a little bit of the silver as well. Um, but that's a very nice piece. I like it. I like the style of it and the shape of it. It's really quite nice for Western pieces. It is not old pawn Native American jewelry. And I talk about that in my silver video as well. So check that out. Hey, I got a question for you before you go. The question of the day has to do with your favorite gym school activity. You're in gym class. And what's the activity? They got a choice between climbing that rope that's attached to the ceiling or playing dodgeball where you can hit your classmates. Dodgeball all the time. <laughs> dodgeball all the time. That's great. That's great. I like it. Nice to see you. Thanks for calling from North Carolina. Thank you so much, Dr. Lori. I love watching you and I have learned so much from you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Good. I want you to succeed. Good for you. Thanks for watching. Where else can you watch? The binge link will help you to watch too. Go to drlorivee.com. Scroll down on the specials and shop page and you can check out my binge link. We've made it easy for you guys to find all of the videos and all the information that's gonna help you build good collections and help you resell for top dollar and help you of course to identify and evaluate valuable art, antiques and collectibles. So I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, use the binge link. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD antiques appraiser. Got all kinds of folks here from all over. And if you're watching, I wanna know where you're watching from. And I want you to answer the question of the day, if you would. <laughs> Make sure that your cameras are horizontal, please. Make sure your cam cameras are horizontal, please. And we'll go from there. Let's take a look. What should we look at? I guess we should look at, those are kind of sideways. The horizontal person's still horizontal. This piece that's kind of round uh, is difficult for me to see. There's a lot of glare on that one. And I'm gonna go with the person who's wearing pink, kind of a smock pink top, and she's holding what I think to be pearls. Kind of a pink yes, top. 
There you go. Hi, you know it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Yeah, hi. Hi, where are you doing? Where are you calling from? Is it is it is the connection not good? We gotta see about the connection. What's your name, honey? Patricia. You're calling You're calling from Louisiana? From San Bernard Parish. Yes, ma'am. You're calling from Texas. I'm guessing. Louisiana. <laughs> okay, Louisiana. It's nice to see you from Louisiana. Show me those pearls. Come closer. A couple of things I want you to look for with respect to the pearls. I want you to look for consistent luster. And I want you to look for, of course, a um, if you have a marked clasp. Is the clasp marked? Uh, no, it isn't marked. Huh? How did you acquire them? Where'd you buy them? I bought it from uh, five pounds of pearl jewelry from the Goodwill online. Okay. And, uh, Are they heavy? They, tied, they, yeah, they, they, don't heavy. Look, they don't look heavy to me. Are they heavy? Oh, yeah, they have it because I was saying I would not want to walk around with this on my neck all, all night. You know, they have okay. it. Okay, all right. Then they're fake. <laughs> and here's why. Oh. There's a there's there's a specific line. You draw a line mm. between very, very heavy ones and just heavy ones. People oh. go, what do you mean, Dr. Lori? First of all, they're quite big. So they look mm. like they're more than eight millimeters, nine millimeters, okay? Yes, uh, with, yes. If you had eight or nine millimeters, that large, the circumference of the of the actual pearl then you typically have a marked clasp and you typically have, of course, um, a consistent luster. You don't have a consistent luster. You don't have a marked clasp and you have too much weight on them because you just said, I don't want to wear these on my neck. A pearl, typically you don't feel that way, but the heavy ones, of course, are not uncomfortable. So you said, oh, these are too heavy for me. Are they relatively long? Do they come down about here? Yeah, 36 yes. inches. Yeah, 36, 36 inches. inches, they're fakes. I would say value yeah. on that, value on 36 inches, there's still some value to them, about $75. So what did you pay for the whole five pound box of pearls? About $40. You did so good. I got you did. for about 50%. You did good. You did very well. Good for you. Good for you. My question oh. of the day, thank you, honey. My question of the day has to do with gym class, dodgeball or climbing the rope? Dodgeball, dodgeball, ball, dodgeball. Ball. Yeah, definitely. Yes, ma'am. Nice to see you. Thank you for being bye -bye. with me. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, yeah. So remember, people go, oh, but you said that they have to be heavy. Yes, heavy, but not uncomfortably heavy, right? And you want to make sure there's a consistent luster. You could see right there on that on the on the live stream that that they are all bit bits of different color. You don't want that when you're looking at pearls. So they're long too. The long ones typically have very, very good, consistent color and luster. So that's okay because you know what? The ones that are, of course, faux pearls still have some value, but I'll show you what to look for. So you can, of course, uh, shop for those pieces and, and find the pieces that are worth top dollar. I'm Dr. Lori. My guests are here from all over. Let's see what we've got. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so you got to turn on some lights. The person who had the plastic bag now doesn't have enough light. Lights. Okay, trying to help you guys out. Let's go with this. Um, it's a. It looks like a necklace. It kind of looks like angel. It looks like angel. Uh, basically, um, the angel skin porcelain. I want to see that one. Not angel skin porcelain. Angel skin um, coral. Can I see that? It's a gentleman. He's wearing like a khaki colored shirt. And for those of you who did not get the cameras horizontal, get the cameras horizontal. Hi, what are you doing? <laughs> Hi, my name is John from Tyler. Hey, John, Tyler, Texas? Yes. Or as my friend from a good dear friend from Lubbock would say, Texas. That's how she yeah. said Because <laughs> she's a true Texan. How That's are right. you? What's happening, John? <laughs> I'm good. I got this at a state sale. Okay, you got to come closer for me. What do you know about it? It sure looks like angel skin coral to me. Well, I thought it was ivory. No. It's not. Here's why. I show you on the videos how to tell the difference between ivory, right? That particular piece does not have that crisscross pattern, okay? That looks like angel skin coral, which will be easier to sell in today's market than ivory. So you okay. bought it in a state sale. How much did you pay? $5. Excellent. <laughs> Tell, show me the clasp. It's a double strand. Looks like all beads. Then it's got that nice statement pendant. And that clasp is a hook. 
Oh, yeah, that clasp just looks like a hook goes into it. Ah, okay, yeah. Probably angel skin coral. I would say it dates to the 1980s. You said you paid five bucks. Does it hit around here? Uh, about right here. Put yeah. it on your neck, John. Let's see. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. Well, you probably have a little bit of a bigger neck. But anyway, yeah. you're a football guy. All right. Value on that piece anytime, all day, 75 bucks. Okay. Nice. Right. Thank you. My pleasure, honey. Nice to see you. Question of the day. Could you climb the rope or were you dodgeball? I like dodgeball. Dodgeball. Nice to yeah. see you. Thanks for calling in from the great Thanks. state of Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Texas. When you're looking at ivory, a couple of different things. And I talked about this in my other videos. If you've missed the other videos, I told you about the Zoom link. And if you're sitting there saying, Dr. Lurie, I got all kinds of stuff. Can you look at all my stuff? Yes, that's a video call. It's easy to do. It's easy to book. You go to my website, drlaurieV.com, and you can pick the date and the time in my schedule. You look at my schedule and go, I like that time. That's convenient for me. And you can book a video call. You can do a long one. I can show, look at all the stuff that you've got or short ones, right? As, as low as $49 for three object appraisals and a direct connection and conversation with me. You can ask me whatever questions you want during that short call. So and we make it very inexpensive so you guys can get the information that you need. Having said that, remember when it comes to ivory, there are certain criteria and certain elements or aspects or a look of ivory that I want you to be aware of because it can be different from angel skin coral. It can be different from bone. It can be different from a lot of different types of materials. Once you learn this stuff, it's going to be up here and you're always going to know ah, that's not ivory or that's not valuable. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to show you what to look for. I'm Dr. Lori. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Guests, guests, guests. Yes. I, I hope you all guys are all sharing the channel too, as I think of it. Uh, your camera's hor not horizontal. I got a couple people with cameras that are not horizontal. Okay, that has too much glare. Let's see. I need a smile from one of you. <laughs> Let's see. Which one do I like? I don't really like any of these. <laughs> that one's that that might be an interesting object, but the camera's horizontal. So I can't really see it. Let's take a look at the pin. Looks like a pin. It looks like it has pearls and it also has an enameled green leaf. Let's take a look at that. And some of you are in the dark. You gotta understand. I can't see if you're in the dark, sweethearts. And try to put on your Wi-Fi. That might help. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How you doing? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, Janice from um, near Rochester, New York. Hi, Janice. So what have you got there? It's a very pretty pin. It's um, It has, I think, sea pearls on it. Let's talk and... a little bit about those pearls. First of okay. all, why do I think it's a pretty pin? It's the three-dimensionality of that pin is why it is high quality and good looking. So it's not just as if they took a flat pin and they started to stick pearls on it, right? It's mm -hmm. basically that they gave you the three dimensionality. I want you to learn how to look for quality because once you identify that, you're going to be better off. I need you to hold it up a little bit and over with that, with that backboard that you're holding up to. Put the back, there you go. Yeah, you might have to have it in front of your face. I'm sorry. Is it oh, marked okay. in any way? It has a mark, but I can't really see it. Okay. Is it, mar is it marked with a fineness mark? I talk about marks. On my website at drlaurieb.com, if you go to the research pages and you look in gold marks, right, silver marks, mm -hmm. or right here on the videos, there's it, no. It, it doesn't have a fineness, but I tested the the green leaves on the presidium, and it, it said um, emerald. It went up to emerald. So the presidium tester, which is the gemstone tester that we offer at drlaurieb.com on our specials and shopping page where I get compensation if you buy one of those, a little bit of compensation where you buy one of those. So basically what happens is it's my recommended products. You use the Presidium, calibrated it, and it went to emerald for those four little faceted leaves that are prong set, set yes. with a prong, and then the, the leaf goes in here. So that's yes. good, they're emerald. So what I also like about it is it does look like it's 14 karat gold. It's at least 10 karat gold just in looking at it even mm -hmm. though you haven't found the fineness mark and the fineness marks might have of course gone away. I will say that's what I like to see. You see the back of this, the construction of the armature or basically the gold portion that is hosting the emerald leaves and also hosting all of those, come closer to the camera if you could. And it, thank you, right there is great. And hosting all of those open areas that are holding on with a spike, each one of those little pearls. 
That's what I like. These are a little bigger than seed pearls. These are more rice pearls than seed pearls. Seed oh, pearls are okay. quite, quite small, but that's okay. That's fine. You knew that they aren't the round cultured beads. You had an idea of that. Can you turn it over? Let's see the front. How much did you pay? Where did you get it? I paid $2 at a garage sale for it. Good. Did you negotiate? <laughs> no. <laughs> you saw it in your RAN, right? Here's your two bucks. I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be very good. Value on that piece, 325 bucks for that pin. Wow. You're paying a lot of money for that particular pin. Little oh. tiny emerald. It's not the highest of quality. Very nice structure. Beautiful construction mm -hmm. of that piece in the manner of some of the great um, designers, of course, of pins like that, like the mm -hmm. Van Cleef and Arpels, like the Tiffany's, uh, like, of course, um, the Harry Winston's. That's a nice piece. That's a really nice piece. $325 wow. all day, every day in a very good market. You probably could command a little bit more. So good for you. So wow. let me ask you, have you asked for a holiday or a birthday gift certificate? Uh, no, I haven't. I, my, my husband's right here. <coughs> <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, it's a good gift. It's easy for him. And you don't have to worry about shipping delays, right? Yes. <laughs> nice to see you. Hey, my question of the day for you and for your husband, dodgeball in elementary school. Did you like to play that or did you like to climb the rope? Dodgeball. I hated the rope. I hated the rope. What about your husband? Yeah, dodgeball. Dodgeball, dodgeball right? Glory. Hi, hon. Nice to see you. What's your <laughs> name? Michael. Hey, Michael, are you happy that she's looking for jewelry? Oh, she's, she's got an eye for that stuff. She really yeah. does. No. I'm going to, that's great. I'm happy to hear it. I'm going to teach her. It's going to help you. You don't have to buy as much jewelry. You can buy more gift certificates. That sounds <laughs> excellent. Good to see you both. Thanks yeah, for calling in from Rochester. Thank you. Happy yeah. holidays, Lori. Happy Dr. holidays Lori. To you. Thank you, honey. So actually, when you're looking at these pieces, I want you to look for the quality that comes from the creation of the piece. So a lot of people go, oh, it's not, you know, even if it, if they weren't emeralds, even if they weren't pearls, that structure, when that structure is good, it can even make costume jewelry pieces look good. And that's what you want to think about too. So let's see. Oh, somebody bought accessory pouches to use and hold all your loops and your small jewelry materials. Yeah, I thank you very much for the super chat and the super stickers. That helps to support the channel. We appreciate that. And yeah, the pouches and all of the other pieces also help to support the channel. So thank you. Things like mugs and others. And yes, I get compensation when you do that, which I put toward making more videos and helping, of course, to support our staff that helps me make those these videos for all of you. But there's a lot to it. And when you're looking at these videos, I want you to see the things that you enjoy. You know, when you shop with Dr. Lori or unboxing videos that have been so popular now you can watch those too a lot of fun here a lot of fun here okay let's see what else we've got yes this poor person who i've made turn on the lights and take it out of the plastic bag and all the rest of it let's go to this poor soul what have you got there hon uh joan rivers enamel watch joan rivers yeah. enamel watch you got to get closer for me i don't know did you like joan rivers um you have to think yes about this. No. Really? Yes and no. I thought Joan Rivers was very, very funny. I thought she was smart and quick and funny. I was sorry to see that the way in which she passed. But these right. particular pieces, her jewelry pieces, um, had a very good and long-standing uh, following. A lot of people bought them from QVC and other places. So is it marked? It's marked with her Joan Rivers. Emblem. Classics, yeah, Joan River Classics. Okay, the em the em the enameling is quite nice. Can you move the watch a little bit so I can get a better a better detail? You've got a, a I'm tilt it up or down is what I mean. Tilt the watch up or down. What's your first name? Rita. Hi, Rita. Where are you calling from? Uh, Minnesota. How much how how much did you pay for these? Oh, I paid a dollar because it was already had one of the strands busted. Okay. So you're going to, are you going to repair it? Well, that's what I'd like some advice from you. Okay. I would say you need to repair it if you want to resell it. Okay. Yeah. You're going to need to repair it if you want to resell it. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to have to learn how to do that or let somebody who knows how to do it, do it. Right. So you paid about a buck in, in damaged condition. It's only worth about 10. If you were to, in fact, repair it to its original, right, it has relatively nice work in the enamel work. Does the watch run? Does it keep time? No, not that. 
it would have to i'd have to have the battery and so it's everything. got a lot of problems it does okay. it does okay, it's got so a lot i of couldn't problems. pass the enamel work okay well the enamel work is quite good which is what you're looking for but again that's what you're looking at so um and someone it says here that someone just sold a joan rivers watch and the buyer was happy so there you go there are people out there looking for them people go they don't want joan rivers yes they do you know that particular yeah, piece if there, i'm going to tell you without the watch working and without it in good shape it's worth about 10 bucks if right. you can get the watch working if it's just as simple as you got to put in a you know a battery for eight bucks then you might want to say okay i'm going to get the battery in and then i'm going to get it fixed um but the enamel work is quite nice do you have all the pieces I do. All right. Then I would say rip, get it repaired. It's probably worth it. When you turn it around, you're probably going to turn it around repaired with the working watch, probably somewhere around 30 bucks. So okay. not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, Will you answer my question of the day? And thank you for taking it out of the plastic bags. You know, you got to give me a little bit of help. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> dodgeball or climbing the rope? Uh, dodgeball. Yeah, it seems like nobody likes that rope. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Nope. Well, nice to see you. Thanks so much for calling in from Minnesota. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. See, a lot of you folks, of course, are learning in the comments of the community of, of course, uh, when I go in and I go, I'm going to tell you this in the comments, you're making the comments. And a lot of you are helping one another because see, somebody else sold a Joan Rivers watch recently. So that's great too. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Make sure that you have a nice, strong connection. That's what we want to see, too. Let's take a little look at this shaker. It looks like it's a shaker. Then I've got to take a look at a, at a vase or a ring or something. It's a shaker. It's kind of large, bulbous. Yeah. How'd you acquire this? She's wearing glasses. Um, I got it at Goodwill last year for um, $3.25. Hi, what's your name, hon? Oh, sorry. It's um, I'm Jessica from Virginia Beach. Hi, Jessica. No need to apologize. It's good to have you here. So Thank you paid you. four bucks. Let's call it four bucks just so I don't have to remember cents. All right. <laughs> four bucks at Goodwill. Yep. What made you buy it? Um, I like it because it has flowers on it. Okay. So you like the you like the Ray Pousse detail. What's Ray Pousse detail? Get closer to the camera for me, honey. Ray Pousse detail is that detail. It's basically looks like it's punched out and it's, it's decorated. It's very typical of areas of Maryland and Virginia. So it does not surprise me that you would find it near Virginia beach. Hmm. That piece is really quite nice. Mainly the best places for Ray Pousse S. Kirk and Sons of Baltimore, Maryland. It's usually where we see the best Ray Pousse. That's a nice piece. It's late 20, late 19th century or late 1800s, early 1900s. Right. Is it marked in any way? Uh, I have not seen any marks on it, but it's uh, pretty heavy. It weighs uh, one pound, 6.2 ounces. Okay, a couple of different things. First of all, sometimes silver plate can be heavier than sterling silver. Why? Copper is the base metal. And then they plate it, right? Then they put the silver plate over it. So sometimes the weight, when you feel something heavy, when it comes to a silver piece, it may be deceitful. It may be actually silver plated because copper's heavy, okay? Your piece in this instance, because of the Ray Pousse, is sterling. It should be marked. Now, can the marks wear off? Yes. Do they wear off? Eh, it takes a long time for them to wear off. But this piece is more than 100 and 120 years old. Oh, wow. So that piece is pretty old. It's really quite fine. It looks like it's in good condition. For your $4 or so investment value on that piece, I'm guessing it's about seven inches tall? Oh, uh, yeah, I would say so. Value on that piece, $150. All right. So, and um, since it is a shaker, I wasn't sure what you put in it, like powder or? Typically, you would put powder in it. Okay. Um, some Sometimes we see these shakers when they're smaller and they can be used for foodstuffs, but usual spices. But typically, the shaker is in, fa in fact for powders okay. and powder types of spices. So All nice, right. nice. Good for you. Hey, my question of the day, right? Uh, dodgeball or that rope climb if you were in gym class? Uh, we never had rope in our gym and I wouldn't do dodgeball because someone threw one at my stomach. So I would choose running. <laughs> Running. You just run. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it was hard. You know, did you have a, the type of school? My elementary school, I remember that it was this whole thing about what do you choose? You had like little stations and you could choose. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know. A lot of schools didn't do that. It was like you got one activity and this is what you're doing. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I never liked dodgeball. It was way too scary for me. <laughs> way too scary for me. And some of the kids were mean. You know, they were oh, like, oh yeah, they were coming at you. <laughs> yep. Nice to see you. Thanks, Dr. Lori. It's really my pleasure. It's really my pleasure. Don't forget, of course, to check out the um, share the channel. Don't forget to share the channel. The channel will, of course, uh, sharing the channel will help me to make more videos for all of you. And I hope you will spread the word about Dr. Lori and, of course, the channel here. I'm here to help all of you. My guests are still here. Let's see what's happening. Oh, my goodness. Oh, your goodness. What are you doing with that easy piece of... Oh, my goodness. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I've Dr. Got, Lori. Uh, hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Just, oh, oh, my goodness. I'm choosing you. What's going on? Where are you calling from? Oh, I'm calling from California. Everybody's How giggling you? at you. The whole mash is giggling at you like, I'm calling from California. I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> What's your name, honey? My name is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Can you back up in, in a little bit so we can see that whole figure? She's a geisha with the big fan. And do you see how the fan actually has very, very long elements, right? You can only, hardly not even see the round, the half moon portion of the fan. It's just these big, long elements. That tells me that that piece has to be dated after 1925 and not during the period of the Edo period, which is the late 1800s. That okay. piece is later, trying to look like an earlier piece, the long fan. When you see the long fan in Japanese culture, okay. yeah, that's okay. right, it's later. So that's a tip for all of you of what to look for. Also notice, you see the, the gathering and the flowing of the material of her dress? Basic, of her dress, of her kimono, basically, that's also indicative of the early years or the early decades of the 1900s, as opposed to earlier. I want you to be able to understand what the elements are, what it, something looks like, so you can date it. Because if you can date it, then you can also identify value. You know, the same way as when you were dating a guy. Once you were dating a guy, you're like, I'm going to identify value now. <laughs> Do I like this guy? Do I not like this guy? How'd you acquire that piece? I got it from the meat in my area. It's like a um, uh, flea market almost. Like a swap meat? Yes, yes. Okay. And on the bottom it says Santa Nori uh, Sculpture in Italy. So it says, is, does it say Santini Sculpture? Oh, yes. yeah, Santini. Yeah. Santini is a very well-known, of course, um, Italian sculptor who's working in the early 20th century, all different figural stuff. Sometimes it's a Roman chariot, a gladiator. Sometimes it's a geisha. Sometimes it's uh, a figure of a, of a um, like a, an, an American president. It could be all different things. Santini, very typical. Can I see the mark on the bottom? But again, those elements show you, right, okay. So it's also on a stand, trying to look Asian, but made in Italy. So don't let that throw you off. So how much did you pay at the swap meet? Not much, $15, because I really liked it. Okay, so the reason is I liked it. Yes. Right? Yes. I liked it, so I bought it. 15 bucks was within the budget. How tall is it? Um, I'm thinking like maybe 15, like 15 um, inches. Like 15 I mean, inches. I love it that you're all doing this. I love it that you're all doing I this. Try. You know, I try. You're using, you're using what you got on you if you forget your, of course, measuring tape. Don't forget the loop. I taught you how important the loop is. Put one in your purse, put one in your pocket, take it and use it. It's one of my recommended products and I get compensation when you buy one. That piece right there for your $15 investment is worth $85. Oh, how cool is that? It's very I absolutely cool. I love it. It's just so different and beautiful. Now, so remember, it is it is in fact it is in fact a carved piece. However, it's carved of composite, so it is yes. not carved of ivory. It's not carved of bone. It's carved of a composite material, a catch-all material, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it's carved. Santini typically makes those pieces. But the Italian carvers, you know, think of Michelangelo. They're good carvers. But those right. are the things I want you to look for. When you see an Asian piece and you see a long fan or a lot of gathering of fabric material in a sculpture, you're looking at something that dates after 1920 or about 1920. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Lori. I'm learning so much from you. I'm I so really glad. appreciate it. I'm happy to help. Thank you for supporting the channel with t-shirts or super chats or just by watching. I don't care what you do, but watch and share. That helps too. And answer my question of the day before you go, Carrie from California. Dodgeball or that rope climb? You know, I have a bent pinky because I played dodgeball like oh. when I was about 10 and I tried to catch the ball and I broke my pinky. Oh no, that's terrible. Yeah, so no more dodgeball for me. No more dodgeball with my daughter. So you're climbing ropes, huh? Um, maybe not right now, but yeah, sure. me either. I'm not climbing the rope. I didn't like climbing the rope when I was young. When I was, you know, eight or nine, I didn't like that rope because I thought, what do we do once we're up there? We're gonna get up there, and then what? We gotta come down. I don't like heights. I'm not good at that. I'm still not good at that. I would been in one of those big towers like the Eiffel Tower and looking down at the Tokyo Tower in Japan. I don't, it's scary up high. <laughs> no, I don't do heights too well either. No. Nice to see you. Thank you so much, Dr. It's, Lori. Have a good pleasure. day. I surprised her by picking her. And you know what? I'll surprise you too. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you next time.